night of the um, crash, the Air Force said four things about this crash. They said there were two bombs, they said uh, they were not armed, that they had both been recovered, and it was safe. Out of those four things, only one thing was really true. There were two bombs. What happened that night was a very unusual event. A wing actually came off of this B-52. The second bomb that fell out of the airplane, uh, the parachute did not open because um, due to the force of the explosion. So it hit the ground without a parachute in free fall. So then they realized we got a broken arrow and rolled the fire trucks toward Pharaoh. Here's Tony going to his Cub Scout meeting. Tony knows the bomb can explode any time of the year, day or night, he is ready for it. Duck and cover. Atta boy, Tony, that flash means act fast. And we were asleep, we went to bed about 12 o'clock. And my understanding, it failed about 12.35, and it didn't wake me up, but my brother, next door neighbor, woke him up, and he came over there and said he thought they were bombing Seymour Johnson Field. And so we went to the fire department, we were volunteer farmers, and uh, when we got out there, they said a plane had fell down here in this field, but we didn't have any idea what kind of plane. So we got down here, and it was a big fire. and. Uh, then we found out it was a B-52, and uh, we, were, we were just standing there, and then a uh, man from Seymour Johnsonville got up on the truck and said, folks, for God's sakes, get away from here. And about that time, some of the fuel caught a fire, and it went all up in the air, and he didn't have to say it again. We all left. Later on, the Secretary of the Air Force, uh, Robert McNamara, said of the Goldsboro bomb that it went through six of the seven steps to detonation. The one step that it did not go through was called the arm safe switch. Is it your grandfather or your father that lived here? Grandfather. Your grandfather lived in the White House uh -huh. right here? Okay. Yeah. Wow. He could tell you something that is. Yeah, granddaddy? Yeah. yeah, he could tell you all about it. First hand information. Wow. Sleeping in the bed, of course. Hear the roar. All of a sudden, plane crashes. Granddaddy says, get up, get up, get up, put your clothes on, put your clothes on. Well, when she gets finished putting on clothes, she's got on about four layers, house coat, nightgowns, raincoats, she don't want to put on. <laughs> it scared her to death, you know, and the whole world is like it's on fire out here. If you are not close to home when you hear the warning, go to the nearest safe cover. If there is a warning, you will hear it before the bomb explodes, but sometimes, and this is very, very important. Sometimes the bomb might explode without any warning. Even some of the window panes in that old house are still got a crack. They never changed them from where the, the impact of the plane. Isn't that something? Never changed them. Just 
just a crack in the window. <laughs> Part of that bomb is still there, buried 180 feet down. The Air Force declared the part irretrievable um, and filled in the hole. Uh, later reports would say they would cover it with concrete and fence it in. That was not true. It was never covered in concrete. It's never fenced in. It's still farmed. Somewhere right here. You are basically standing on top of it somewhere right here. They used to put fertilizer out in the wintertime real early because, you know, they didn't have time in the spring like they do now with the trucks and everything. And it turned green on top of the ground. Well, they thought it was something from the bomb when the snow melted, they see this stuff all over the ground. And they're wondering what it is. And my granddad tells them, says, that's fertilizer. He said, no, I don't think so much tunnel, so this is something coming out. He said, well, you take you a sample of it. And they were on a helicopter, I won't never forget it. Came down, took a sample, flew out, come back and said, Mr. Tunnel, you were exactly right. I said, that's fertilizer. He said, I told you it was, I put it out there. Never want to see it again, not really. Yeah, it, it was some experience, it really was. Something that you won't never forget. Somebody asked Jack Revell how big an explosion would that have been? what was the chances of a detonation. And this is the only man in the world that was, had, the, had the chops or the, the ability to speak because he deactivated the thing. He said, in my opinion, we came damn close to a bay of North Carolina. Granddad said it looked like the end of the world, said everything was on fire out here. Said just fire all in the yard, everywhere. So. My mom and dad live in Goldsboro, and of course that's where I lived. But school out all summer, right here on the farm, all my life. Never, never left, so I've been here all my life. Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash?